Welcome inside the coach's den here at Swiss Mountain Village. I'm Drew Piscopo and I'm with Coach Resignalo. Coach, tough loss this past week, obviously, with the uh, Lehigh Valley Steelhawks. Uh, talk, a, talk a little bit about that game and uh, just, especially the first half, it looked like, you know, that's where uh, Lehigh went on a little bit of a run there in that second quarter, um, and that's where they kind of closed the gap. But really, the second half, it, you guys played pretty well, and it was mm -hmm. it was a fairly competitive game for the most part, too. Yeah, we, we actually had our first lead that we've had in a long time in the last for within the last couple of weeks. You know, I think at one point it was 18 to 16 um, into the second quarter, and you know, like you said, the second quarter got away from us a little bit. Um, maybe when you're looking back at it, I probably could have kicked the, kicked the field goal there five seconds instead of you know throwing it up in the end zone to see what, what happened. And then you know Dennis, uh, the quarterback, ended up scrambling around and then throwing it up to try to make something happen. And and they ultimately ended up picking it off and then returning it for a touchdown. You know as time expired, so that was tough going into the locker room. You know down three scores. So, um, but you know I felt the better better chance for us going in the half, knowing we get the ball back second half is. You know, it could have went either way. You know, if we were to protect it a little bit better in that play, you know, we had a guy open. So, um, but, you know, with that going into the game, you know, we had to make some changes on the O-line, you know, late Wednesday night going into Thursday. You know, we lost Tyrell Smith um, with a wrist injury, Kevin Van, uh, Ken Van Huel with a knee issue that he wasn't going to get an MRI until um, that Friday or yesterday. Um, so, you know, he was out until he got that done. And then, um, you know, Trey Goins, our center, you know, he had some issues where he needed to go home and take care of some stuff. And so we were putting in a little bit of bind. So, you know, we brought some guys in last minute, you know, um, they met us, met us there in Lehigh and got them up to speed Friday, Friday night about what we were doing for the games. So that's, that's pretty tough for some guys that get thrown into the fire with no practice and uh, especially this level. So I felt overall, I thought we did good for being in that situation. And, um, you know, you know, Dennis made some good plays for us and, um, like you said, second half we came back. And I think we came back within seven um, after uh, Roshan Marshall returned that uh, pick six, got a pick six, um, put us in good shape, and then we, you know we just missed a few things in the secondary and, and gave up a couple stuff. So, yeah, talk a little bit about. Yeah, I know you you mentioned a little bit about the transitions there. Mm -hmm. You got, uh, I guess I saw two offensive linemen that day too, Pharaoh and Andrews. I Pharaoh and Andrews. Andrews uh, started for us at center. Um, Donnell Andrews. He actually played at St. Aug mm -hmm. um, with uh, Justin Wells, who Justin Wells made his first appearance with us um, this past week, which was pretty good for us. And um, Jordan Pharaoh. He played at Mercyhurst College, um, so he was a local guy up near Lehigh Valley area. Um, also, uh, Sam Soto. You know, big boy, six seven, three forty. You know, yeah. he he did well for us. Uh, just a couple some rookie mistakes. All three of those guys made, and you know, it it, it was expected. You know, them being thrown into the fire, no practice and whatnot. So, um, so with that, that you know, that was tough. I I think the biggest new face to most Grizzly fans, obviously, at your quarterback mm -hmm. position, Haverilla came in and and played this game. And what kind of went into that? I mean, what what where we obviously we didn't see Panasuk, and 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 you know, we got a new guy coming in. Looks like a, maybe a little bit more of a, uh, I guess, an athletic type quarterback mm -hmm. can move around a little mm -hmm. bit. Saw him make some plays with his, with his feet. Not a whole lot of rushing yards, but you could see right. some mobility there. Right, yeah. Uh, so, w yeah, what kind of went into that move and when did you guys bring him on and how, how hard was that trying to get him adapted pretty quickly? Yeah, we, we brought him in, um, you know, in the middle of the week. And, uh, you know, we had decided after that game against Columbus that, you know, we needed to make a, a move at quarterback. Um, you know, quarterback. Our quarterback play last couple of weeks, you know, wasn't the best. Um, it's you know, Stephen, great guy, you know, great quarterback. He started off well for us, um, but you know, the numbers and the film, you know, speaks for itself that you know we struggled a little bit in the quarterback play. Um, receivers weren't helping through the weeks, but you know, we we made some moves receiver wise. You know, bringing in um, Alex Coleman and Shamar Graves, adding them to Malachi and Speedy. Um, so that was big. They, they, they did well for us against Columbus and, um, you know, they had a great game. I think Malachi had over 100 yards. Speedy had over 100 yards receiving this past game versus Lehigh. So we got the production needed. It's just we couldn't make some plays and, you know, with the miscommunication up front and with those guys being their first game, you know, it was tough, you know, being able to protect the quarterback, you know, all around. And, and again, you know, we struggled in the secondary. So, yeah. Yeah, Jones with 107 uh, receiving yards and then Clark with 114 mm -hmm. as well. And you talked about Graves coming in, uh, another guy who produced for you, had 61 receiving yards mm -hmm. and another touchdown. Oh, yeah. Uh, one big difference I did see between just in the box score between the two teams, you guys only had three guys catch a ball. Those are the three names, obviously, mm -hmm. I threw at you. 
On the other side, Lehigh looked like they had six or seven guys catch right. the ball. Right. I mean, is, is depth at wide receiver, you know, I know it's late in the year, obviously. Is that kind of an issue for you guys, you think? Uh, no. I mean, we got four good receivers, and I'm happy with our receiving core. Um, I, was, I was happy with the quarterback play. I was happy with the receivers. Uh, you know, you only can put three on the field at once, so that right. you know that was tough. With us not having a solid tight end type guy, right. you know, that goes in the mix of adding the other receiver too. I think two different linemen caught balls for Lehigh. I could be mistaken; it could have been the same guy, um, but you know, they were able to utilize some things that we couldn't, and um, you know, they took advantage of some stuff, and we just couldn't couldn't finish the game. I mean, I thought we played well, um, well enough to possibly win the game. You know, we had some very bad questionable calls with pass interferences. I think there was a total of seven that we only got one of the calls and three or four of those would have been touchdowns if, if we got the call. Uh, well, they prevented touchdowns. So, but without the penalty being called, put us in a situation. So, you know, it, it, it just comes down to just doing what we need to do all around. Uh, I thought we started the game better than we had in the past. Um, we didn't wait till halftime to start playing. You know, we, we did pretty well at the start of the second quarter to put us in a position to do some things that we just couldn't capitalize. Right, so I guess moving forward, obviously into this next week, you know, any kind of position moves you think you may have to may have to do going into a really good Jacksonville team, obviously. Yeah, just you know, bringing those guys in the last minute. Obviously, they didn't practice, so I got to go back to our personnel side and and see can they be at practice this week? We got to bring guys in that can be at practice and put some uh, playing any game at any level. You got to be able to practice. You can't go into a game with no with not practicing, you know, um, efficiently to be prepared for the game. Right. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back here inside the Coach's Den with Coach Rez. Hi, I'm Bob Brewer, owner of Anytime Fitness and offensive line coach for the High Country Grizzlies. And I'm Dexter Jackson, wide receiver for the High Country Grizzlies and personal fitness trainer. We have a new, larger facility with 24-7 access. Within our training program, we provide a focus on your personal goals for a healthier lifestyle and create customizable training programs. Come in for a free consultation and get a fitness plan tailored just for you. Come join us at Anytime Fitness Room! Here at Blackjack, we were voted the best burger in town three years in a row. Our story started with we left Romania, it was a communist country, and um, we had to cross the Danube River on an inflatable boat. Me and yeah, my mother was in a boat, I had to swim across actually. I lived in California since 91 until about four years ago when I came here to help her run this restaurant and like I said, I'm carrying on her legacy. I think we have the best burger, but I want you to come out here and give us a try and let me know what you think. Um, here at Blackjack, we were voted the best burger in town three years in a row. I am originally from Romania. Um, my mother opened this restaurant about 10 years ago, and um, she passed away last year, and I am here carrying on her legacy. Our story started with we left Romania, it was a communist country, and um, we had to run across the border. Um, we had to cross the Danube River on an inflatable boat. Me and yeah, my mother was in a boat, I had to swim across actually. We've been in the United States since 1991. I lived in California since 91 until about four years ago when I came here to help her run this restaurant. And like I said, I'm carrying on her legacy. The culture comes into play where all the food here, as I said, not, not just the burgers, but everything we serve here is cooked to order. And uh, we make a lot of our own sauces in house. Um, a lot of our, her, the recipes are, are unique because they're designed by her. Um, and people love that, people like that. Uh, I think we have the best burger, but I want you to come out here and give us a try and let me know what you think. Welcome back inside the Coach's Den here with Coach Rez. We're gonna take a look at our Skyline Sky Best Offensive Player of the Week, which was Speedy Jones at wide receiver. It led the team in uh, yards receiving with 114, had two touchdowns as well. Uh, and then uh, we're also gonna take a look at that defensive line and uh, some secondary play as well for our uh, Carolina West defensive player of the game. If you had to give a defensive player of the game, uh, who would you give it to? Yeah, I would say, you know, Rashawn Marshall had a good game for us. Had some good pass breakups, was in position to make some plays there in the you know, second half, had a big pick six for us. I think it was 30-some, 30 35-yard return for touchdown. That pulled us within seven, within another score, so that was big for us, big play. 
overall defensive line played great. You know, last time we didn't get to, to Warren like we did the first game. Um, so we put some pressure on them this week, you know, got a safety, you know, Sutton and Ethan put some pressure on them there. Um, just as a whole, you know, we played good up front. Offensively, you know, Speedy Clark, Deron, Speedy Clark, you know, it could have went either way between him and Malachi. They both had great games. Even Dennis had a good game. I think he had six touchdowns total. Um, so, uh, you know, with that being said, you know, I, I felt that Deron, you know, Clark, Speedy, um, would be great for offensive player of the game for us. Yeah, I think this is the first time he's ever gotten that award from so. us as mm -hmm. well, too. But uh, he's been a, a pretty solid piece for you, really, the entire year, kind of having that, uh, almost that one-two punch him with Malachi. Mm -hmm. Malachi, much bigger wide receiver, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, Speedy's pretty quick out there. Absolutely. Um, talk about a little bit about that defensive play, too. I mean, it, you know, in, in times... I know earlier in the year it, you've you've had success getting to the quarterback. Other games you haven't. It, it, you know this this was a pretty good game for you guys. Mm -hmm. In all in all honesty, uh, Warren Smith did not have a whole lot of passing yards. Really, statistically, you guys blew him out of the water. We can talk about yeah, I think, passing yards yeah. and receiving yards. I think starting the game, I think uncharacteristically for Warren, he's he leads the league in percentage, right? Um, completion percentage, and I think to start the game, it was like three for ten or something like that you know that's that's not his style of play yeah um, so we were able to you know do some things and put pressure on him to you know make some decisions but he did make some plays you know right. with some of his receivers and whatnot so um, you know that was big for them right well we're going to take a uh, another quick break right here and we're going to take a look at the uh, Jacksonville Sharks the upcoming game right after the, the break here I've coached a lot of football games in my life the one at Michigan was big for us when I took that short ride on the shoulders of our team, we knew that we'd done something really, really special. The hard work and dedication and commitment that nobody sees is what leads to great victories. That's the same thing you'll get at Discovery Chevrolet. That's the reason I agreed to be their spokesman. Discovery Chevrolet is where relationships matter. Step away from the exercise cycle and step outside yourself in Boone, North Carolina. Retirement. Staying pretty busy, actually. Busy. 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 Honey, look. Number 18 in the house. It gets the same thing every time. Uh, you know I can hear you, right? You know I can hear you, right? I'll be here all week. For your many retirement needs, Nationwide is on your side. Back inside the coach's den, I'm here with Darren Clark, uh, Speedy Clark, as everybody calls you, and uh, our, our Skyline Sky Best Offensive Player of the Week this week. Uh, great game for you, really. Four catches, 114 yards, so a lot of yards on just four catches and two touchdowns. Talk mm -hmm. a little bit about your uh, mindset going into this past week. Going into this game, the quarterback just told me to get to a spot, and when I get to the spot, just throw it up and come down with the play. So when he told me to do my motions quicker, and take the DB to the middle of the field so I can have a two-way go. He was just going to throw it up and make come down with the plate, the 50 50 catches we talked about all week. Yeah, a great game, like we said. Um, you know, especially, what, what did, you, what, did you see anything different from Havarilla compared to maybe a Panasuk as far as game plan or, or how, how the, the style of play between those two is? I mean, both of them guys are AFL veterans and arena veterans. Um, both of they play, I mean, they, they play like getting ready for the game, almost the same. But right. Dennis, he's like more active in the backfield. Like he keep plays alive with his feet, like rolling out if he have to. Yeah, a little bit more mobile. Yeah, a little bit mobile and getting rid of the ball when he have to, like so we won't lose yards and, and taking sacks. So that was a good thing to have Dennis to come in and step up as a veteran and make some big plays. 
Yeah, and uh, like we said, a pretty good production between you and Jones and, and Graves as well uh, mm -hmm. on the receiving. You actually, you guys had five touchdown catches in total and over 280 yards uh, through the air. Really outgained, as, as uh, we said earlier, uh, Lehigh through the air. Um, Looking forward to these uh, this Jacksonville Sharks team this next week. You, everybody knows about them being at the top of the standings of the mm -hmm. of the uh, league. Uh, what's something that you think you might can take advantage of going into this next week? They have a lot of different DBs, so we just gotta go out and compete. Like just like you know, get open, run our right, run the right routes, so everybody can get open, block for each other, make sure we execute urgency and make plays, make the 50 50 catches. Like we talk about all week since the beginning of the year, just make the 50 50 catches, we'll be okay. When you watch uh, uh, Jacksonville on tape, is mm -hmm. there guys, I mean, I know you're, you're obviously always studying their secondary, and yeah. are you looking at specific guys and trying to see what works and maybe what doesn't work on these guys? Yeah, um, like some of the guys they have now, I look at how they sit flat, like the speed of the DBs. And I also look at the D line as like the pressure coming out the end by JP, Jeremiah Price. Like he put a little pressure on quarterbacks because of his jump. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, I, I try to coach up like the linemen are some of the things that I know and tell the receivers to get open, like motions, do the right thing, like some things I know to, so we can get the ball so we can score. So all we got to do is just go down there and compete. We'll be okay. Yeah, when you when you talk about the secondary, you said a, a bunch of different guys. Are they do they play a little bit more zone or a little bit more man? I know the league's kind of more of a man league though. Yeah, isn't they it? they play a little man in zone, and I think every team they they have an idea what kind of speed we have. Because right. I'm gonna try my best to take like take the top off the defense, mm -hmm. so my other guys can get open underneath. Or Malachi Jones, he'll do the same thing. So they have to respect our speed. We just gotta make the plays and just go in there focus the whole four quarters. We'll be okay. You know, when you're in motion as the motion guy in this offense, do you prefer that or do you more like uh, being set more in the traditional style? I mean, I like being in motion and I like being set, but being in motion, it gave me a, like an edge on like how the DB set up. Right. Like I could play with the motion and I could speed it, do zone. Like it's a different way you could work with the motions to see how the DB's feet set up Right. And like being like just like stand still receiver, like if they press me, that's man, man. I'm going <laughs> to yeah. beat them. That's speed, speed on speed. That but works. I'm in high motion, he going to have to respect it too because if he like seven yards near the, near the line of scrimmage, he going to have to get out of his break quicker. Right. That kind of works to your advantage, obviously, when yeah. they're in press coverage. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Um, is there anything that you've noticed, I guess, different from this Jacksonville team on tape this time compared to the last guy, time last, you guys faced them? Last game, they ran the ball more, and they, they only had, like, two, like, receiving touchdowns, and they and receiver had four touchdowns. So I see a weakness in their secondary than what they had before because right. most of the guys they had before were, like, veteran guys, and two of their guys went up to Canada, and LaRacha Jackson went to Tampa. So they have a whole new group. So we just got to take advantage of that and ball out on them. Awesome. We appreciate your time, man. Best of luck to you next week. I appreciate it. We'll be back here on Inside the Den Coaches Show here with Coach Rez. Joel made fresh daily. Look at you. Yeah. Boom. Oh, 100% mozzarella. <laughs> Kids are going to love these Hungry Howie's emojis. Hashtag sawsome. The best part is they're edible. They're edible? How's that? Get a meal deal for any budget. Or get a medium one topping pizza for one dollar with coupon code medium one. Hungry? Howie! Step away from the television and step outside yourself in Boone, North Carolina.
back inside the coach's den. We're going to take a look at our sponsor highlight here, which is obviously Switz Mountain Village. How can something be so close to everywhere you want to be, but also possess the peace and quiet you desire in a true Appalachian Mountain setting? That's what you'll find at Swiss Mountain Village, nestled in a tranquil valley just off the Blue Ridge Parkway and very close to downtown Blowing Rock. For over 35 years, Swiss Mountain Village has been a haven for high country guests and families, a place where the relaxing is easy, a place where you can fish from the fully stocked trout lake or just rock your cares away on the front porch. Then, when it's time for high country activities, you are close to everything. Swiss Mountain Village is only just a few minutes from the Blue Ridge Parkway and Moses Cone Memorial Park. Also, just a few minutes to downtown Blowing Rock, Tanger Shops on the Parkway, Appalachian Ski Mountain and other area ski resorts, Tweetsie Railroad, Appalachian State University in downtown Boone, Grandfather Mountain, and many more. Swiss Mountain Village offers cabins made of rough-hewn logs, complemented by a native stone fireplace. The Swiss chalets feature a unique architectural design. The stairway to the loft actually takes you over the stone fireplace. All of the Swiss Mountain properties are completely furnished with towels, linens, complete kitchens, washers and dryers, gas logs, free Wi-Fi, and cable TV. There's also a clubhouse and outside barbecue. One, two, and three bedroom plus studio units are available, accommodating from two to eight people. Swiss Mountain Village offers 12 beautiful acres that will become your high country home away from home. It's where you and your family will create great memories and a place where you will return to time and time again. To learn more about Swiss Mountain Village, visit SwissMountain.com or call 888-785-1188. Inside the coach's den, I'm Drew Pispel here along with Coach Resignalo. Coach, taking a look forward, uh, it's not going to get much easier. You got no. Jacksonville uh, on the schedule here. The Jacksonville Sharks right now at the top of the standings. Uh, surprising, though, from this team, they, they fired their head coach, Coach Stout, a few weeks ago. And really, when they were 8-0 and in the process, did you anyone see that coming at all? No, it was, you know, it happened all in one day, really, you know, and kind of took everybody's surprise. I'm sure it took Coach Stout by surprise. You know, Coach Stout's been doing this for a while, and um, so I don't know quite much, you know, the issues at hand of what led to that, but um, obviously it was, you know, some mis uh, miscommunication or uh, disagreements, so to speak, you know, between front office and the coaching staff. So, um, you know, that's unfortunate for them, but they've kept it moving. They're still undefeated. Um, I, I want to say the coach's name is, uh, last name is Burley, I think it is. But he was previously before this job, he was the OC with the Cleveland Gladiators, like in season. So um, he left there to take the head coach job in Jacksonville. So um, obviously everything happened at the last minute. So, uh, but to be undefeated, to have those type of issues, you know, is, is tough for any organization to be in. But they've they've pushed through it and kept doing what they're doing. They're still undefeated. You know, so this week is going to be tough. You know, going to Jacksonville will be anywhere from 75, 8,000 to 10,000 people. So it'll be very loud environment very crazy atmosphere um, so it's gonna be a tough game you know to say the least yeah especially after last week with the loss most likely knocking you guys out of the playoff out of the playoff chase there how do you kind of get the morale of this team to you know say the season's not necessarily over you still got some games here on the schedule and not only that a really good one coming <laughs> up next you know I, I think you kind of run that risk when you when it whenever you're a little bit down in yourself of just going into a game and knowing that you know knowing that you're already out of the chase of getting blown out. How do you kind of mm -hmm. keep your guys focused and not let that something like that happen? Well, we just got to put a product on the field that's, that wants to compete, you know, and, and still finish strong. You know, not everyone makes the playoffs. You know, just like in the NFL, teams that are out, they still got to play. You know, we can still have the possibility to be the first team to beat Jacksonville. 
you know, what better way to, to, to give them a loss before going into the postseason. So that's a tall task at hand to do so. So we got to have a great week this week, figure out what we're doing personnel wise. And, and uh, ultimately for me going into the game, you know, we just got to do what we can do to be competitive or it'll be hundred and nothing, you know, so we want to do everything we can to, to keep that from happening. So um, it'd be nice to get the win, but I, I'm just looking forward to going in and, and being competitive and put our guys in a situation to be successful. That's all we can do. On the morale side, you know, that, that's going to be tough. You know, that's a tough task in itself to handle that inside with amongst everybody to, to um, you know, keep everyone upbeat and, and try to make it the best we can traveling down there to Jacksonville, um, turn it into, you know, let's just do the best we can and, and go from there. I mean, that's all we can do. Talk a little about your, your your new quarterback, obviously a little bit more. I know we you know we, we mentioned at the beginning of the show you brought in Havarilla and he's he's got the start this past week and he played fairly well. Mm -hmm. um, not 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 great in the completion percentage part, but he put up great great yards, mm -hmm. uh, five touchdown passes. What have you seen from him that you like uh, moving forward? Oh, uh, just his ability. You know his leadership. You know his experience. You know he came right in and and the guys really took to him. You know with his attitude towards the game. You know he presents himself as a true professional, does, does the things that's needed as a player that wants to be at this level to say they're a professional athlete. I mean, he goes to the gym every morning. I mean, he takes care of himself. He prepares his body to be that professional athlete to do what he needs to do on game day. Um, just even took it a step further of, you know, dressing up in a suit and tie going to the games. And when I played, that's what we did. You know, you suited and booted it, going to the games, look, look the best, be professional. And, uh, you know, so it, it opens some guys' eyes on some stuff of, if you want to be at the next level, you got to do what you got to do to get yourself right to be at the next level. You can't just say it, you got to do it. Right. Uh, big One big thing I think that you want to take forward going into this next week as far as something that you could look on that Lehigh Valley game especially and, and possibly improve on. Like you said, you guys played really well in that second half. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure you saw some things that you liked. Uh, what's another thing you think Mike can make that step to possibly pull off uh, this big win this, uh, this weekend? You know, just keeping everybody together, you know, keeping the camaraderie, try to build some, con some, take all the positives we can and mold it together and do what we can do to finish this season out strong to prepare us to build for next year. Right. Well, Coach Rez, thank you for your time today. Mm -hmm. Thank you for joining us here on the High Country Grizzlies Insider Dan Coaches Show here at Swiss Mountain Village. We'll see you guys next week.